this section examines power steering. Increased applications of front wheel drive and wider low profile tyres places additional loads on front wheels. Steering then demands more effort from the driver. Power steering helps to reduce the additional effort needed. It's of most benefit during slow cornering and when parking. Assistance is provided as soon as the steering wheel is rotated in either direction and is designed so that even if system failure occurs, the vehicle can still be steered. An engine-driven hydraulic pump delivers hydraulic fluid to the power unit at the steering box or rack and pinion through connecting hoses and pipes. The fluid reservoir can be mounted on the pump or it can be separate. With the engine running, fluid flows continuously from the power steering pump to the steering gear and back to the pump. With the steering wheel in the neutral position, little pressure is needed to maintain fluid flow and little engine power is needed to operate the system. When the steering is turned, a rotary valve integral to the steering input shaft directs fluid to one side or the other of a piston attached to the steering gear. Pressure then increases as required to provide assistance. In a worm and roller steering box, the piston slides in a cylinder in the casing. It has an extension formed on one side with teeth which engage teeth on the pitman shaft. Pressure applied to either side of the piston produces a force which is transferred through the teeth to help turn the pitman shaft. In a rack and pinion steering gear, the piston is formed centrally on the steering rack and the rack housing provides the working cylinder. Seals at each end of the cylinder isolate the power section from the rack and the helical pinion. Seals in the rotary valve section at the pinion input prevent fluid leakage there. Connecting pipes transfer fluid from the rotary valve housing to one side of the piston or the other to provide assistance which acts directly on the rack. The rotary valve is located between the steering gear input shaft and the pinion gear. It consists of an inner member which forms part of the input shaft and a surrounding sleeve member fixed to the pinion gear. Turning the steering wheels makes both members rotate in the steering gear housing but it is the slight relative rotary displacement of the inner member and the sleeve member which controls and directs the power steering fluid flow. This slight rotary displacement is allowed by a torsion bar which is connected to the pinion gear at its bottom end and the input shaft at its top end. When the steering wheel is turned, there is resistance from the front wheels at the road surface. This resistance is transmitted through the rack to the pinion gear so that the input shaft twists slightly on the torsion bar. Since the inner member is also attached to the input shaft, this twisting provides a relative rotary displacement of the inner and outer members. It is this displacement that lets fluid flow through the valve to act on the piston at the steering gear. The input shaft can twist through only a small angle before it contacts a stop on the pinion gear. This is needed to provide manual steering when power assistance is not available. With the engine running and the steering in the neutral position, fluid flow is directed into the valve assembly through drilled holes in the outer sleeve. As soon as the steering is turned to the left or right, the slight relative movement occurs between the inner and outer members. In the neutral position, the inner member lets fluid pass equally to both sides of the rack piston and return to the fluid reservoir. Equal pressure is applied to both sides of the rack piston. No power assistance is needed. When the steering is turned, Fluid is restricted from making a free return to the reservoir. It is now directed to the side that matches the turning action. At the same time, fluid on the opposite side is directed to the return circuit, back to the reservoir. Slight rotation of the valve gives a small amount of assistance, which becomes progressively greater as the torsion bar flexes and more assistance is needed. The grooves of the inner member are precisely shaped to meet the flow of fluid. 
All power steering pumps have a flow control valve to vary fluid flow and power steering system pressures. A pressure relief valve prevents excessive pressures developing when the steering is on full lock and held against its stops. The flow control valve is located at the outlet fitting of the pump. During slow cornering, or when parking, pump speeds are normally low. There is less demand for fluid flow, but to provide the required assistance, high pressure is needed. Discharge ports direct the fluid to the outlet and then to the steering gear. The outlet fluid pressure is slightly lower than the internal high pressure coming from the pump. This drop in pressure occurs as the fluid flow passes the needle and orifice in the outlet fitting. This lower pressure is transmitted through a bypass fluid passage to the spring end of the control valve. The pressure difference on the valve causes it to move away from the outlet fitting, but the force of the spring prevents it moving far enough to uncover a return port back to the pump inlet. Movement of the control valve controls the position of the needle valve in the outlet fitting. And this controls the fluid flow to the steering gear. At higher speeds, with no steering manoeuvres, fluid flow is increased. This reduces pressure at the outlet. The lower pressure is transmitted to the spring end of the control valve. The valve moves and opens the return port back to the pump inlet. Movement of the control valve also controls the movement of the flow control needle in the outlet fitting. The needle closes in the orifice and fluid flow to the steering gear reduces. With the steering wheel held at full lock, the steering rack power piston chamber becomes fully pressurized and fluid flow stops. This high pressure is transmitted back to the spring end of the control valve, opening the pressure relief valve a small amount of fluid passes through the pressure relief orifice, providing a pressure drop. The valve moves and uncovers the return port to the pump inlet. A predetermined relief pressure is thus maintained. The pump is normally a vane type with sufficient capacity for all operating conditions.